call the meeting of the August 1st, uh, Tuesday, August 1st, 2017, Planning Commission to order. Um, Lester, would you lead us with a pledge, please? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Knudsen? Present. Commission Commissioner Pont? Here. Commissioner Monette? Here. Vice Chair Hardy? Here. Chair Kistner? Here. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a public forum. This is the opportunity for the public to address the Commission on items of interest to the public that are not listed on this agenda. Because of restrictions imposed by the Brown Act, the Commission may not engage in discussion or take action on matters nor not described on this agenda. Please observe the time limit of three minutes. Any public comment? Close public comment. Uh, we have next items are consent items. Member of the Commission of the Public may ask that any items be considered individually for purposes of considering alternative action for extended discussion or for public comment. Unless that is done, one motion may be used to adopt all recommendation, recommended actions. Uh, there's only uh, one item. It's 4.1. It's approval of the minutes of June 20th and July 18th, 2017. And Madam Chair, could I ask that you pull that item? Yes. And split it, if you would, please. Okay. Um, do I hear for approval of the minutes for June the 20th? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Monette? Yes. Vice Chair Hardy? Yes. Commissioner Knudsen? Yes. Commissioner Pond? Abstain. Chair Kistner? Yes. Do I hear a motion on the minutes for July the 18th? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Pond? Yes. Vice Chair Hardy? Yes. Commissioner Monette? Yes. Commissioner Knudsen? Yes. Chair Kistner? Yes. Next item is item number six, scheduled matters 6.1, consideration and proposed approval over resolution determining that the fiscal year of 2017-2018 of the 2017 to 2022 five-year capital improvement plan is in conformance with the general plan. I think you're on. Thank you, Chair Kirstner and the, the Planning Commissioners. Um, we're just getting the PowerPoint up right now. Uh, thank you for coming tonight for, for just our Capital Improvement Program plan, but uh, we'd like to move this forward. To me, it's a little late. Um, we're hoping with finance we can get this going next year um, in conjunction with the operations plan so it all goes together. So. Um, it does kind of confuse things being broken up. So um, this is a five-year budget um, from 17-18 to 2021-22. The first year is what we're looking at, the first year projects, because that's actually what um, council has funded um, moving forward. And the um, the five, the, f the remaining four, four years um, is um, like a forecasting tool, budgeting tool. And um, maybe things will go up, maybe things will come down, maybe things will stay the same. Um, it's a five-year planning document. Um, it's maintaining improving city infrastructure. Um, right now we're looking at a $40 million over five years. A um, big chunk of those projects are the um, utility uh, structure, utility rate stru um, study projects that were um, recently passed by council a year ago. And we're implementing those projects moving forward. Um, the four, and also there's an influx of funding coming in for um, transportation pavement with Measure T and SB1, state SB1. So the four categories we're looking at are civic streets, wastewater, and water projects. Um, 
There we go. Here's the uh, capital improvement plan um, through the five-year total. Um, the first year allocation of 1718 is looking at 5.8 million. Many of these projects um, were mostly in the water and wastewater. We're probably on the the slate and civic projects were on the um, the fiscal. Um, 1617 budget, but they did not move forward as fast as we thought. Some of them were actual short funds too until the um, the rate study was approved by council in November. But um, some of those projects are midway through project or they still haven't been started yet. So 5.8 might seem a lot, but you're adding in 1617 funds and 1718 funds. And but over the course, you see it starts growing. Um, the wastewater and the water funds you can see are the the big the big um, impacts to the budget and um, as we've all heard about for the past year and a half and streets you see the big influx of funding coming in which is pretty exciting for our city um, the 2.4 and, and four years out is due to the um, the start of the uh, influx of the OBAG um, one Bay Area grant funding that we receive for the or we're looking to receive for our, um, downtown uh, Main Street improvement project for the sidewalks. That's a 1.2 million dollar grant. So um, that's why that's a big chunk um, For construction of that year, but the rest is going to be probably um, our measure T funds starting to come in Which is exciting. It's about six hundred thousand dollars a year beginning in 1819 not sure how much we'll get in that first year, but um it's pretty exciting to see six hundred thousand dollars to start coming into our city to start doing some street projects um you know what we're coming to the plan commission for is the general plan consistency um, six five four zero one um, coordinated program of proposed public works for the ensuing fiscal year shall be submitted to the city plan agency for review and report as to conformity with the general plan as we know it's many years past date but um, we're still trying to conform to that as well as meet today's um, state and federal regulation requirements six five four oh two is no property shall be acquired as disposed until the plan agency is reviewed and reported as to conformity with the general plan um, not, not sure why this is still applicable this year but um, we, we added it in there um, the proposed CIP projects are to maintain rehabilitate existing infrastructure no increase in capacity um, the exception is 682 new city owned restroom on money way um, we came to planning commission I believe in May for that project um, for the removal to move forward and final design and um, when Ty Bias gets back from paternity leave we'll um, hopefully get the design documents finalized and get it to council for approval so we can go out to advertise and then the other one is the, the tour tourism management guidance policy of 3.4.2 and 3.4.7 Um, do I need to read these? 3.4.2, support the development of a responsible visitor serving component. That's all part of the downtown restroom, the city's economy. Um, 3.4.7, encourage alternate modes of travel and reduce the number of length of vehicle trips generated by visitors to the community. Um, here's the um, first civic projects and road projects. Um, we have the downtown restroom project, um, construct restrooms and parking lot on Money Way. And then the ADA transition plan, which is a new project that um, council approved funding for towards to for facilities, um, which will be ADA upgrades to existing city buildings. Um, there's another line item in um, under the Civic for the um, curb ramp upgrades. And then um, Railroad Avenue is a grant project. Um, we have an annual curb gutter and sidewalk repair, just a slated project, so when things come up, we can get repairs out to bad sections of street. And then we've the city council approved um, $250,000 of general fund money to the pavement restoration for the annual, it's like an annual project, um, as I said, measure T funds and um, state SB1 funds will start coming in. We've already um, received some of those funds this year, um, but there'll be additional funds coming in and later on in 17, 18, 18, 19 to start um, boosting up um, actual street repair and maintenance. And here are the sewer projects. You have the wastewater treatment plant upgrades phase one. Many of these projects on this first page, I, I forgot to um, bring up, whoops, sorry, this thing's shipping around. Um, As you know, the only two new, three new projects on this sheet from the civic projects are the ADA plan, the pavement restoration, the annual project, and then the ADA transition plan for curb ramps. Um, the other three projects have been to the planning commission before and have, have been recurring projects that just haven't gotten completed yet. Um, on this, God, I keep skipping forward. 
um, on, on this page, you see that the older number is just a plain S67. When we get to a number with an 18 in it, that's a new project being brought to the Planning Commission. So um, the phase one upgrades, that's the sewer plan upgrades. Um, this has been ongoing beginning last year. Um, that's going to be a big project going to construction, hopefully, in the following year. The reclamation field improvements, which is the spray fields. <coughs> out the wastewater treatment plant. Um, there's a pond two and three levee repair, which is um, um, bolstering the levees with riprap. Um, facilities on automation, um, it's getting our, our more automated processes. We're very antiquated at both our treatment plants, and um, this is, would help um, automize some, automate some of our procedures out there and having our guys go out there hand manually changing um, the system controls. Um, there's a new well that needs to be developed out at the uh, wastewater treatment plant so they can spray down items and um, also serve the employees. That's currently in the works. was on last year's docket. And then there's sludge removal that needs to be ongoing at ponds one and two. I keep skipping. Okay. Um, in a few years, we'll have the install and operate. We, actually, this was already in last year. Is the install and operate a temporary office building? It's, it's basically going to be a module, a rented module, um, a trailer that the the utility folks can be um, using as an office and conference room instead of being in the old facility they have. That's more of a um, electronic electric quarters on top of the effluent chambers for the entire plant. Um, it's, it was noted in 2006 that they needed this additional space, but um, there's now finally the funding to move forward with it. And then um, in four years out, go with the, um, in four years out is slated for a new operations building completely. Um, added to this year is the, did you see the first 18 number on there for the sewer plan is replacing the sewer mains annually, um, update the GIS maps for of the sewer system, and um, a sewer master plan, which I'm not, I could not find one in our past. Um, I'm sure there's someone in there that we did a, a sewer master plan once upon a time, but I couldn't find our fairly recent one. And that will help us identify projects um, coming out to do and help us um, identify um, maybe our pipe replacements coming up. Um, so we have a priority list. Um, and then our first of our water projects, um, the, the most top priority is our Upper York Creek um, restoration, the dam removal. And um, this has been up here for many years. And um, we're hoping to move to construction next spring. Um, the Dryer Road Booster Pump Station. Um, I believe that should have come off of this one because this is this fiscal year because um, this has been <coughs> moved down a couple years out. And then we have the Homes Tank Upgrade. Um, we're currently in design. This started design last year during the rate study, but we're almost completing design. So instead of just stopping in mid-project, we're moving forward to design. And so when it comes up in a couple years um, on our five-year plan, we can just move forward out to construction. Um, the Bell Canyon Creek inflow is a state requirement. And um, we're working on a scope of work right now with the consultant. Tank 2 rehab um, needs to move forward this year. And then the pump station upgrade, again, is um, upgrading our backup power at a couple of our pump stations. So in the event of a power outage, we can get um, water to our, our citizens. And then we have the lower reservoir dam rehab. Um, this is a, it's an old project that's still in the works. Um, the Bell Canyon intake tower is another old project, but it's finally in design. And the, the project contract was uh, approved in May. So now the consultant's moving forward. Um, we have spill containment at Bell Creek. And then we have spill containment at Stonebridge Wells. And this is just state regulations, you know, capturing chemicals and storage um, and just moving forward with those implementations of those requirements. It's, it's regulation, re, re, regulation driven. Um, and then there's a, a restriction at Rutherford Pump Station. Again, this is an, uh, I think it's been an old project, but it's finally moving forward. Um, since it's funded, and um, it's to allow to maximize the, the um, water coming up from the dryer booster pump station, which is the city of Napa water that we purchase. There's a restriction, a couple of restrictions, I think, in the main line that only allows so much to be pumped up to our city a day. And um, it's like old plates they left in the system that might have been okay prior to the um, maximum needs for our city, but since we're paying so much and we use that water first, we want to remove those restrictions so we can guarantee to get all the water that we're paying for. 
Um, again, we have the water master plan update. Um, this was city council directed to get these moved up so we can um, prioritize um, pipeline replacements around our city. And um, the two newest projects that were not included in the rate study um, are as a result of the Division of Dam Safety requirements. Um, there was a news release last week from the state, and you may read about our Bell Canyon, the local paper coming up. Um, but um, the phreatic um, surface monitoring assessment and Bell Canyon spillway stability assessment, um, those uh, work plans required to the state on September 1st. Um, and then we have to move forward, and so those projects are budgeted for this year because they have to be done. Um, make sure that our um, dam meets seismic seismic um, in case of the worst events. And then if you guys approve this tonight, um, as in general conformance of the general plan, um, we'll move forward to city council adoption on August 8th. Um, there will be a couple of transfers into the budget. Um, one is I want to add a little bit more funding to our, our pavement restoration from gas tax, it's funding we already have. It just has to be transferred from the account of gas tax into the project account. And then there were some additional funds that the city council approved in um, professional services agreement right at the end of June that were past the budget that I need to have transferred over from uh, wastewater and water. But um, I think that's generally about it. Um, do you have any questions? I do. Um, Director Smith, this is very interesting. I think historically, um, from a resident's perspective, it's felt like the city's sort of underinvested in its infrastructure. And um, first of all, I'd like to get a sense from you. Um, you know, you're relatively uh, new to the job. Just how this capital plan sort of redresses perhaps the underinvestment uh, that's occurred in the past. Um, I know it's sort of an outside question, outside of conformity with the general plan, but uh, just from a public uh, perspective, it'd be interesting to know. As far as how dire our infrastructure is? Or, or how, how this is helping to address that. The rate study was the biggest step. Um, being part of the ad hoc committee and being new to the staff here, and, and it, the, the rate study ad hoc committee that the council directed having this, this spring really helped me identify our needs in this city and how deferred many of these utility projects have gone. Well, our pavement is another one, but that's always been hard. I mean, the countywide Measure T sales tax really helped boost that income, and I'm excited about implementing um, pavement restoration in a few years. But that's a huge thing that many other counties and cities don't have, that, that Napa County wide did the right thing with that sales tax measure. And the state, you know, the SB1 flux is about $140,000 more a year into our, our funds. We only get about 120. I mean, they have that backwards. But that's 260, and then you get another 600,000 in a year, and then general fund will need to match the Measure T funds with about $379,000 a year beginning once we start getting the funds in from Measure T. So you're looking at about 1.2 million a year in influx for doing streets and with only about 30 lane miles I have to confirm that number we um, and so ha so that would that would seem to be quite substantial that'll be a big influx of funds to help start fixing our streets and still trying to maximize getting some federal funding for some of the streets that are eligible for aid and um, for those sorts of things I mean I'm looking at the ramp of sort of your spend over time um, you know how does how does the you know identified need criticality versus funding and 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 finding the contractors and I'm sure there's tons of rules and regulations around all that um, are, are you able to be fairly flexible or is it something that's really planned out two or three years in advance as far as like the utilities or all of them all of them um, we before I came on board we implemented a um, master's professional services agreement we, we solicited um, requested proposals or qualifications to get some consultants on board which is very helpful to a community that is small as ours that we can just if, if we get a consultant to come on board help us design a project under a certain amount like forty five thousand dollars they can come out they can they can give us a proposal and we can get them started right away on some of these design projects some of the larger ones will go out to a, a formal RFP um, if that's what you're requesting yeah, about. It, it is. I'm, I'm sort of getting a, trying to get a sense of, just for the public record, because here we are, <laughs> uh, uh, whether um, the, this effort, which seems quite substantial, is, in your estimation, moving us to address the deficit in infrastructure spending that the city has done, appears to have done over many years, and you know how flexible as increasing funds become available, are you able to sort of throw resources at, at our backlog I think that's the question 
I think it's, since we are very dependent on consultants here, we are a smaller staff, smaller city, that we have a good line of consultants that would like to work here. It is a beautiful place to work. And to, um, so we haven't had an issue with getting consultants on board. It's been a busy time. The um, dam, the Oroville Dam, has made many agencies busy, and, and sub-agencies actually pushed away from the city as far as plan checks, review mm -hmm. for development. That's been an um, ongoing um, difficulty for both planning and public works to get that extra third-party help. Um, but on the construction side or capital improvement side, yes. we haven't had an issue with getting consultants on board to do work. It maybe might take a little bit longer because everyone's inundated with projects. But um, as far as construction goes, we've been successful this year in getting some bids. And um, our, new pro our new city manager has some ideas on how maybe we can maximize with other agencies and maybe bundle projects, um, which I think is a fantastic idea. Some agencies have done that. And um, I'm looking forward to working with him on trying to maximize that on some of our street mains, for one, is, is a huge plus if we could get something like that through with the county and maybe our, our neighboring city um, municipalities. Um, but I don't see a problem with with this kind of money and these kind of size projects, like the the wastewater treatment plant. Those don't come up too often. Many agencies or have already upgraded their plants, so I think there'll be some hungry contractors out Great. there for us. Great. That's what you want to hear, right? Well, I just, I mean, I, I, optimism, pessimism. I, I'm happy to hear whatever is you know accurate. So, um, but it seems like you have a good handle on the, on all of this. So. I'm pleased about that. Thank you. Um, but that's that's the thing. We have some big we have some big projects. If you have a lot of small projects, that's when you start having a hard time getting contractors in. But if you have a multi million dollar construction project, they will come here. I'm hoping, um, but I'm pretty confident in that. Then I then I have sort of a side question, which isn't listed here, and also does have sort of nothing to do with the general plan consistency. But um, I understand from the parks, some of the folks on the Parks and Rec Committee, that there's also potentially some work to be done in Crane Park and funding available for that. Would they normally be in here? I'm specifically talking about the tennis courts. Would this be in this plan, or would it be in a separate plan? It would be identified and given to us. Like there's some deferred projects on there, like Signorelli Barn and some other projects, police, a uh, new police department, new city hall, that are deferred because we don't have funding identified for them. No, I thought that for the tennis courts, for example, funding was already in place for that, but perhaps I'm wrong. Okay. I don't think that's included in, the, in, in this report. I think you've got the four, the, the four major things. I don't think parks are in there. It would have been under civic. It would have been under civic oh, if, really? if hmm. it was included. Now, if it was included as an operations, if it's something that's less certain dollar figure, it might be under our maintenance, or which would be our operations okay. budget. Okay. But if it's a significant capital improvement, um, it would be identified in CIP. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. I do not. Um, maybe I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to. Um, well, can, I'm gonna, when, when we do comments, I'll ask you when I'm doing the comment, okay? Because it would be out of context, okay? I would like to ask you if you're the one that put this, this draft together. I had significant help from Jennifer Toole. She helped Steve put together last year's draft. Um, I brought over some of like the, the, the spreadsheet tables. Uh, we, we commingled what I used to do in Petaluma and brought them over to this to our city and uh, made it our own. And, uh, I just want to compliment you. I think it's very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Toole was a big help, and um, I have to give a lot of credit to her for her helping me. All right, I'm ready to take some comments. Um, well, I, I listened carefully to what Commissioners um, Hardy and Ponte said last time, and I realized that, uh, you know, about paying attention to the, what we were supposed to be focused on and, you know, paying attention to what the, what the requirements are. And, uh, but, but this is all based on a lot of ignorance. So um, I've, I looked at everything, looked at the 93 general plan, which we're supposed to be 
um, deciding if this is consistent with it. And um, so anyway, I thought that I, I have some things, some questions and some, and some things to say. So um, principle one, um, legal and financial operating and accreditation consequence for future, for failure to perform when considering these projects. That's the funding, funding principle one that you have in here. So I was wondering, um, in response to a report given to the city council by the forensic accountant some weeks ago, and public input by a person with knowledge about financial matters, it's not clear to me if the internal accounting controls found inadequate by both of those speakers have been adequately defined and instituted for long-term efficacy and lower liability. Um, last reported by the finance department is that we could only see three months into the future with any confidence regarding these control metrics. I might be wrong, but it seemed to me that this vote is premature. And I want to say that I think the report is wonderful. I have no issue. I have one tiny little thing with, 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 with your report and what's, what's being done. My, what I, am pay, what I am fo was focusing on is the consistency between the general plan that we're having to use and this going forward. So, um, okay. So more needs to be uh, known about the accounting controls referenced here before going ahead. This seems to me to be the work of the city council with the new city manager. And until some clarification has been made, I don't see how we can evaluate this plan adequately to vote on it. If, if the funding behind it is, if there's any question about the funding behind it. And I'm uh, simply going on the last couple of city council meetings that I attended. Um, okay, but aside from that, Funding principles three, four, and five, um, and then I, f I found what I thought were inconsistencies with the 93 general plan on page 9-5. Uh, 9.2.2, develop new sources of water adequate to serve the projected year 2010 population. <laughs> and okay, um, you know, I'm just, all right. Um, prohibit water service to new customers outside the city unless a potential threat to health and safety can be demonstrated. Is, and I was wondering, that's 9.2.4. Is, is that the current practice with respect um, to infrastructure improvement? Is that consistent with current practice? I don't think it is about hooking up outside or maintaining outside um, water hookups. Or Do you understand what I'm saying? City Council approves fire um, fire service agreements but I don't believe right. we allow any new potable water okay agreements. so that's still that's still the way it was that's still okay um, I okay um, okay it refers to only one well at Stonebridge which is just you know it's just dated um, and 9.9-5 drill new wells if there is an increased need from the 20 percent groundwater limit I was wondering is that limit still in place is it is it addressed in any of these projects. Uh, new wells can be dug if needed during drought, and how does that fit with the wastewater site, the, the, the well at the wastewater site? I, those questions just came up in my mind, and maybe they're covered, but I didn't see it. The um, wastewater well, that's been on, I think it's been slated for two years now, but um, it needs the old well needs to be demolished um, because of the proximity to, okay. and the, the sanitary seal on it wasn't correctly, so it's not like you're okay. drilling a new well, you're drilling one properly. To okay, meet so today's regulations, well, which no. would be against what they said. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. It also says the distribution system serves 2,760 residents and 15 wineries, <laughs> and I doubt that it's the same now. And I was just wondering: is that does that make that does that inconsistency make a difference? Do you think in terms of any of these projects? That's why we keep seeing we're maintaining capacity. I mean, it, we're already out, outdated on our general plan, so right. we're maintaining capacity. We're not increasing capacity with any of the projects. Okay, all right, and then um, uh, treated water storage, it says is 1.4 million gallons. Is that, how, we, do we have more now, or is that the same? Or do you know? And I, was, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. We have two tanks, I believe. 3.4 million gallons, oh. I think so. Oh yeah, do you know? Yeah, we have definitely more than 1.4 million yeah, gallons. I think it's, okay. I think it's like 3.4. Okay, so I don't know what effect that discrepancy has, but it just, okay, the sewer 9.2.3 require extension of city sewers. This has probably happened areas when there's a new development, there has to be city sewer. Okay. Um, but it all, this page also included a benign description of the Vineyard Valley system of pumps and storm drains to prevent flooding, which I thought was interesting. So, um, um, that would be inconsistent if any of the work that's in the CIP is, a, is around the levy. I don't think there is. Um, 
Okay, the York Creek Dam description is benign and inconsistent with page 27 of 96 because it says we have to remove it. But in this general plan, it's, it's spoken of as, as a benign um, entity. And so I guess um, there was some other stuff too, you know, the tourist stuff I think you addressed, the tourism stuff and the bathroom is, kind of, is inconsistent. So my question isn't, I'm not questioning anything you're doing. It's just, I, I just think that um, we're being asked to determine the consistency between the, the general plan 1993 and the current CIP, and I don't think it can be done really responsibly. I didn't really read it carefully, but I was just wondering if we, I know that you need to get this moving in order to do some things, but I was just wondering, at least if we could get some clarification from the city manager and the city council on the on the funding issues um, before, you know, I, I would like to, I mean, going by the letter, I would like to wait till the new general plan is certified because then there would be more consistency. But I know we can't do that. So, but, but, you know. We're not, you're not approving the budget we're on not, this. The we're council not will. We're having anything to do with the money. I understand that, but it needs to be consistent with the general plan. Uh, oh, and that, but that, okay, that issue, we're not improving. I don't see how I could approve the CIP if there's a question about the safeguards now maybe you can help I might be totally in left field so those were the things that came up for me when I was trying to do my due diligence and compare the, you know see whether there were inconsistencies so um, and the, but that the issue for the, of the funding is just something I'm very concerned about before going ahead with with any of this and it may be inappropriate here to be talking about that but I just brought it up anyway so okay Lester you have some comments well, yeah, I, I can offer my my own perspective. Uh, I, I don't think the funding for the CIP is in front of us in any way. Correct. I believe that the government code mandate for a finding of consistency um, as um, written is for finding uh, that the project is consistent. And, and I think that's separate and apart from and very different from the question of funding. Um, the other observation uh, I would share is that to the extent that descriptive language in the 93 general plan is out of date, obsolete, um, I, I think that's really irrelevant. I think the question of general plan consistency um, is one that calls for uh, uh, consistency with the guiding policies and where applicable the implementing policies. Um, uh, and so uh, you know, a description of uh, the existing, uh, then existing storm drainage, flood protection uh, uh, infrastructure at uh, Vineyard Valley, for example, I think is just irrelevant. It's out of date. But um, unless there's some guiding policy or implementing policy that says what the city should or shouldn't do about flood protection and storm drainage at Vineyard Valley, then I, I don't see how um, the, the inaccurate description or characterization uh, of the then uh, uh, situation would affect review for consistency of a new capital improvement project. Um, so, you know, I, I have no doubt that You know, a, a thorough and thoughtful review of uh, the guiding and implementing policies, you know, could turn up some interesting questions. Um, one of the sort of general challenges of general plan consistency findings is that it's hard to think of a general plan that's internally consistent uh, um, <laughs> to any sort of uh, a level of perfection, and and uh, and thus almost inevitably with a complex project description. And in effect, that's what we have with uh, uh, this kind of capital improvement 
plan. We've got all sorts of projects that fit into all different uh, places in the city's infrastructure. That's complex enough that it, it would be kind of surprising if, if you didn't find some spot in the general plan that, that didn't seem uh, entirely supportive. But uh, you know, I don't want to speak for the city attorney, but, but the, the, the whole subject of how consistent does consistency have to be has been litigated. There's there's been uh, uh, an appellate decision on it. it was an Oakland case, Sequoia Hills, I think, is what it was called. And you know, the, there, the court observed that perfect consistency is unrealistic. So um, it's uh, something more like a substantially consistent uh, standard, I think, that one often has to apply. But, um, I mean, I'm. I haven't done anything more than review the staff report myself, uh, and and I would I'll also observe while I'm at it that uh, we have references to a handful of uh, guiding policies here, uh, nine point two point two nine point. 2.3 and just a, a, a 5.8.1 and, yep. and then some tourist management um, we don't have any of the policy text here I don't know that that's necessary but I'll just confess I, I have did the plan not if you want to read it go back uh, right <laughs> uh, well which um, page? <laughs> that's helpful thank you as I did not do that that's the section right there um, Different than, yeah. oh, I don't know about the, yeah, five points. Well, there are a number. Uh, yeah. But I, I think the guiding policies are the right place to look. Yeah. So, um, they were right there. Yeah. Oh, you flagged them. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> so, yeah, so 9.2.2 refers to the 2010 population and a lot of other calculations, but. Um, that seems to me relevant to Dwyer Road Booster Station. I, I don't, I don't know that it's really relevant to uh, the uh, dam removal. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these one by one. I, I don't think that's necessary, but. Um, but it also occurs to me in reviewing this, and, and it, it kind of stands out uh, with respect to the uh, a number of the projects where under general plan policy you, you've just written maintenance of city infrastructure. Uh, I assume that's because uh, staff didn't find any particularly relevant or helpful general plan guidance, and I wouldn't expect to on maintenance. Uh, uh, necessarily, um, it, and, and that, that has me thinking. Well, it, you know, is that something that should be corrected in in the next general plan? I don't know. Uh, or, uh, I mean, my own reaction to that was to say, well, if that wording in the table indicates that there's no applicable general plan policy, then I'd, I'd say not applicable. And there isn't really a general plan finding to be made. Uh, that's, that's how it reads to me. And, and I should add that there was quite a few in here that I probably should have put more maintenance of city infrastructure. Some, the 2010, for example, um, uh, I made a mistake putting that uh, in there. But at the same time, I, I'd, if there isn't anything in our general plan about um, ADA compliance, mm -hmm. And there is not. <laughs> yeah, well, Even in existence, then that should be fixed. <laughs> or state and federal guideline requirements or um, All the new some stuff. way in the yeah. future, I think, because those <laughs> kinds of projects can be significant as capital improvement projects. They are. Um, so that's it. That's all I have to say. John? Uh, yeah, all I can say is I, I agree with Lester. Um, you know, most of these projects in here the great bulk of them are maintenance or maintenance oriented um, 
if I can pick out the automation for the wastewater system, uh, although that isn't strictly speaking what one might think of as a maintenance project. Um, without it, we'd have to hire more staff. Uh, and it is attached to the current existing structures. So I think it would qualify under some rubrics as a maintenance project. Um, and I recognize that our general plan is so old that much of this stuff, like the ADA projects, there probably isn't an appearance in the general plan for projects like them. Um, in which case, I don't think you can find that these projects are then inconsistent, but just silent. So I think a finding of consistency, if you look at it as a binary choice, yeah. would be the only choice. Is so, you said silence. What's the choice? Binary. No, 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 no. But you said, what was the choice that you would have? Oh, where, to the, where the general plan is silent as silent. to the project. Okay. okay. Right? It doesn't appear, uh, mention of it doesn't appear, an inkling of it doesn't appear um, that between consistent and inconsistent. Um, I think then the finding becomes it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Correct. I agree. I'm. Um, David, oh. David, you've had your comments, Bobby. Well, no, I could David, say more. Go ahead. Are you kidding? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> um, Please go ahead, David. I, I have no further comments. I think it's great. Thank you, um, uh, Director Smithies. I think it's uh, well done. And I went through each individual item and I found. Um, the, the same thing that Lester and, and uh, John is talking about. I also found that if I read the, what the intent of the general plan is, that most of the, even the maintenance projects um, really fit into the intent of what the, that was put into the general plan. That, that, that we were really trying to keep these functions uh, for the benefit of our citizens, and I, and I think you've done that well. Uh, so I, I think that's very, very well done. Well, I'm, I'm just one, I guess, what I'm hearing from the rest of the commission is that I was probably trying too hard. I mean, I was trying to um, do what the staff report said should be done, and it seems to me if that, that task is way too big, I mean, to really do it is too big for, for this. And I'm just wondering where that, where the um, directive comes that this that we vote on it that we we decide this before it goes to the city council and um you know because there's no there's no um time limit on it there's no it doesn't say, i think um, the chair kirsner uh informed there's me no that there's no time limit on it it's not really clear when it should be turned in i thought the um, government code was very ambiguous anyway yeah so i guess i i just uh, didn't know how to approach this um appropriately and i'll call you I'll call somebody. Um, well, Bobby, I went through the whole thing also. I went through every. every but I mean, page to page. really go through with the with the, you know, it just seems like more work well, did, than I, is appropriate I, I, for, for that. I don't know. It just seems like an odd directive, and I don't know where it came from. I I just I'll say that this is the first agency I've worked with that we went to plan commission for a CIP budget. We usually went directly to our board of supervisors or our um, city council. But I worked for a charter city before. Um, and I believe there is state code that says you need to come to planning commission. Oh, okay, and that's, that's right. Is, well, we're not a charter thing. You know, that's, no. that's that was the first of the two government code sections that are cited in the staff report. Right. It goes to the planning agency. Okay. Okay. Do I have have a motion? So we should look at it too soon. Move the resolution. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Pont? Yes. Vice Chair Hardy? Yes. Commissioner Knudsen? Yes. Commissioner Monette? Yes. Chair Kistner? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for, I think you did a really good job. Thank you. So, you, know, I, you and whomever else helped you, I, I, just, I, I, thought, I thought it was a real good job. Thank you. I was very pleased. Uh, we have nothing. Um, do we have a department report? Um, nothing much, Chair Kisser. I'd just like to point out that uh, we brought on an intern in the planning department last week. He's sitting in the, uh, the audience tonight. His name is Joseph Brockoff, so you may be seeing him uh, around City Hall helping us out with projects here and there. Welcome. Um, I would like to um, ask that something be put on next um, meeting's agenda, and that is the... Oh, wait a minute. We're, we're, we're not at the agenda forecast yet. Oh, sorry. I thought we were. 
Okay, agenda forecast. Uh, next meeting, we have a new home on Pratt uh, uh, on a vacant flag lot that will be coming before you. We also have uh, the pedestrian bridge going from the Las Colbus Hotel over to the Behringer property. That will be before you next meeting. Uh, the first meeting in September, uh, 1508 Spring Street, the historic home that was demoed, will be coming back to the commission uh, for review. If I may ask, Aaron, did they have to do, um, did they do a neg deck for the bridge? They did. With biological studies? As far as I know. Okay, I'm, I'm curious about how they cleared, particularly the shading question. It, the, 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 I believe the document is on our website. It has gone out for public review. So okay. um, I'm not familiar with the, the details of that, but it, uh, a neg deck was done. That I do know. Okay. And Fish and Wildlife was consulted and all that stuff, so. That's, that's all right. right. You have an, that was the agenda forecast. Correct. <laughs> uh, I would like that. I, I would like to have put on the general. Uh, I, I would like an update every every time and where we are with the general plan and what's been accomplished since the last time. I will inform Director House of all that. Right. I really think that that's important that we get to that. I mean, we we did that for the Hunter project a long time. And I think that the general plan is every bit as important as the as the Hunter project, and I really think that we need to get that so we know where we're at with it. Got it. Thank you. And I would like to have in the next meeting. Um, I think the issue that we were going to put on this um, agenda, except that Noah wasn't here, and that is a lot on an adjustment ordinance. And the reason I think it should be discussed right away is that I think as it reads, it denies um, um, due process to. Um, to people who don't have enough, don't have a thousand dollars to, to be heard in public. And if we go by the ordinance the way it's written, that is the way it should be. And so I, th that's why I want to. I think since since due process is being denied, I think it's very important to get it on the agenda as soon as possible to work on it. Noted. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thanks. I think I think that depends on what the priorities are. That's correct. All right. Yeah, I'll inform uh, Director House of these requests okay. and, and we'll but proceed I think you can there. tell him that that's what she would like. But I think we have yeah. to. Follow the, the, the not only Count, our council directed but particularly priorities. council's priority. That's correct. Okay. Does the rest of this body think it's very important, or is it just I who do? I'm curious. Oh, I, I, I think, think it it's should important. come back on a future agenda. I, mm -hmm. I don't. I, I do don't, too. But um, and I think we do need to defer okay. to staff with respect to organizing. Uh, agenda priorities and, and the timing. But yes, I want it to come back. Okay. Okay, that's it. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>